Hey Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, U of L is shutting down the basketball team after two positive coronavirus tests. There was a skirmish over Confederate statues, and we now know who received the Paycheck Protection Plan loans. All that and more is next on Hey Kentucky. Welcome to Hey Kentucky, along with LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer. And Keith, this is the first time it seems like it's really hitting close to home, but probably not the last time we'll hear of a story like this. It's really starting to worry me for sure. I know. Let's get to it. The University of Louisville is temporarily suspending all men's basketball activities after two members of the program have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The school says the two positive tests did not come from players and that all the proper protocols are being followed, including the quarantining of those impacted. And they look forward to the resumption of men's basketball activities soon. No other UofL teams are shutting down. This comes after we told you last week about three Eastern Kentucky University athletes, as well as many athletes from across the country, testing positive for the virus. And, and Keith, I would love to know, even through all these tests, how many people are testing positive that have symptoms and how many that don't? Because that's what really worries me here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because then, I mean, I guess you know that it's going around on your campus or in your your room but I mean yeah it's it's so difficult to know how bad it's affecting these athletes it's like you know the sports gods are giving us uh, just enough to think we're gonna have a season and then coronavirus is just taking it away and um, I did hear from somebody today in Louisville who said the women's basketball team is lifting weights in the same place that the men are so they haven't had anything uh, you know positive testing wise yet but they have to be careful now because they've been in the same place and the former Louisville star, uh, you mentioned the women's basketball team, Asia Durr, is sitting out the WNBA season because she did test positive for coronavirus and she's still recovering. I know. It's just I, I, we're starting to see it just about in every sport to make you wonder, is this going to happen with this league or with that league or is it just going to stop at some point with you know several players testing positive? Yep. All right, well, things were much calmer in Anderson County this morning at fiscal court meetings over removing Confederate statues from the county courthouse. This comes after a skirmish broke out at a Lawrenceburg City Council meeting last night on the issue. One woman said she was assaulted after she stood up for an African-American man after another woman allegedly threatened to hang him. Do it. Oh, you'll come hang me. You'll 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 hang me. you will hang me 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 you will hang President earlier this year hung Governor Bashir in effigy, have reportedly been guarding the statue. Keith, uh, once again, like, these are statues. How can you get so worked up over this? Well, I mean, I guess in a way we're seeing both sides getting worked up over them. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I get it to an extent. But they're statues, they're, they're you know, and, and I realize they stand for something, but it's just like, are we going to take them all down? You know, what are we going to do with all these? And, you know, what to re replace them with if we do at all? Um, it just seems like right now things are getting a lot worse before I hope that they get so much better. And, and it seems like we need to talk more than sit down and, and be concerned about statues. Yes. I mean, I think it's a place to start the conversation, but yes. Let's focus on the real people here today. That's just kind of my thoughts. Yeah. All right, Kentucky Sports Radio is reporting that UK Athletic Director Mitch Barnhart has been contacting donors to discuss scenarios for the upcoming football and basketball seasons with the primary plan to hold games with fans in attendance, but only at half capacity. That would mean 30,500 fans at Kroger Field and just over 10,000 in Rupp Arena. The plan would cover all season ticket holders first, with more than 27,000 season tickets already sold. Looks like getting your hands on tickets this fall could be tough. Now, of course, this is all a very fluid situation because we don't know what's going to happen in the next week or month. But, Keith, uh, do you really anticipate there will be 30,000 fans at Kroger Field? I'm not so sure. 
Uh, I, I think that that's probably going to be the primary idea that they go behind. I think they're obviously, like a lot of organizations, they're looking at every step that they can take to make sure people are safe. And, I mean, it's better than Major League Baseball with no fans. It's better than NASCAR with no fans to get half the people in there. And if that takes care of your, your season ticket holders, great. And the others will just have to sit and watch it at home or go tailgate and enjoy the atmosphere from the outside and watch it from, from outside Kroger Field. And listen, nobody's forcing the fans to go. It, it's just going to be that they would right. be, uh, you know, they could go, the season ticket holders. So, First in uh, line. Yep. yep. All right. More than 48,000 businesses, schools, and organizations in Kentucky received loans under the Federal Paycheck Protection Program, totaling more than $5 billion. The majority of loans to Kentucky-based businesses were less than $150,000, but some did receive much larger sums. One of the biggest loan recipients was Center College in Danville, receiving a loan of $5 to $10 million. Other large loans of $1 to $2 million went to the much maligned Brady Industries, the state-funded company trying to build an aluminum mill near Ashland, and Crosswater Canyon, the nonprofit arm of the Ark Encounter tourist attraction in northern Kentucky. Also feeling the brunt of COVID-19 is CBL & Associates Properties, the company that owns the Fayette Mall, the Jefferson Mall, and the outlet shops of the Bluegrass in Simpsonville, among other commercial shopping properties. According to filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the company has missed payments on its debt and has a bleak outlook going forward, only expecting to collect 25 to 30 percent of May rent from tenants, and many tenants' businesses have closed for good, leaving storefronts empty. A spokeswoman for the Fayette Mall says shoppers should expect business as usual and that the mall is not closing. Um, but this is expected, Keith. I mean, there's we've got struggles because businesses were closed for three months. Yeah, that and you're trying to figure out, do I have enough people that want to come work and, and open up my store? Is it worth, you know, bringing them in, paying them everything that I need to pay them? And, and can I make enough? Because really people aren't shopping as much. So it, it is kind of strange to walk through the mall a little bit and see a, a lot of the lights off. I know. It, it, it's crazy. But the mall is still open. All right. Senate it Majority is. Leader Mitch McConnell continued his tour of the state, making a stop at Isaiah House in Washington County. McConnell touted his CARES Act that has provided assistance to more than 48,000 small businesses across the state and indicated that there was another stimulus package on the way, focusing on health care, jobs, and education. He stressed the importance of sending students back to school this fall and the need for liability protections with a narrow focus on the coronavirus for entities operating during the pandemic. And he said everyone needs to be wearing their mask, which I was glad to see, Keith, because I think a lot of people see this as mixed messages from the government. But when Mitch McConnell even is saying, everybody, please wear your mask, I think uh, maybe it's time for the president and vice president to follow suit. Yeah, I, I think we've seen the vice president wearing it a little more often. And, uh, you know, the thing is, you see they're holding meetings uh, on the Capitol and everything. And you'll see, for the most part, uh, not all, but you'll see Republicans not wearing their masks. So to hear Mitch McConnell say that, I think, is very important, could go a long way. I, I agree with that. I think it's a very important thing he said. All right, after receiving a lot of national attention from celebrities and politicians, ranging from Hillary Clinton to LeBron James, leading up to our primary election about alleged voter suppression in the bluegrass, Kentucky may now be looked at as a model. Kentucky set a record for the number of voters in a primary, and some experts are saying the rest of the country should take note for the general elections this fall. Secretary of State Michael Adams hasn't yet committed to vote by mail for the general election, saying it's four months away. And four months ago, he was preparing for a May primary. But it is nice, uh, Keith, to see that we didn't do as bad as some people thought we were going to do. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously going to be tough with having one polling place in two of the largest counties in the state. But at the same time, we all had faith that we were going to make it work. We all expected a big turnout, and, and not only in person, but also through the absentee voting and, and by mail. and. So I think it's awesome to be able to, uh, you know, do a little this to the people that were, you know, trying to put us down before we even got it started. Yeah, we can figure some things out here in the state of Kentucky. We can do that. All right, up next on Hey Kentucky, <laughs> we're going to catch up with one of the former greats to play at UK.
Corey Peters, he's getting ready to start his 10th season in the NFL, and it could look very different. Stay with us.